Bejelic formula has to be corrected. And in fact, we know what the correction must be. Uh, so there are two possible things. A, if the labor market labor market is inefficiently tight, which corresponds to a boom, what happens? Well, if your labor market is inefficiently tight, it means that the derivative of social welfare with respect to tightness is negative. Now, and the derivative of tightness with respect to UI is positive. So in that term, the correction term in the formula is negative because it's a product of a positive term and a negative term. So correction term is negative. So the optimal UI is really you add a, a, a negative correction term there and uh, as a result, optimal UI will be less than uh, in the Benicelli formula. Uh, and then we can look at the opposite situation. Is the labor market is um, inefficiently slack? So that's you know, a slump, a recession. Then the correction term. So the correction term is first effect of tightness on welfare. If the tightness is too low, increasing tightness is good. So we have a positive term. Effect of UI on tightness here is positive. So the correction term will be positive. And so you add a positive term to uh, this formula. And so that means that uh, the optimal UI is more than in the Bellicelli formula. And so in a situation like this, um, what we have is that you see, in good times, you want less UI than in Bellicelli. In bad times, um, you want more UI than Bellicetti. So you can see that in this framework, basically, as you alternate over the business cycle between good times and bad times, your UI is also going to alternate. In good times, UI will tend to be low. In bad times, UI will tend to be high. Okay? Because the Bellicetti level of UI is, you know, is basically constant over the business cycle. Um, so here, what you get is that your optimal UI is counter-cyclical. Okay, so what that means is optimal UI is more generous in booms, in no, sorry, excuse me, in slums or in recession than in booms or expansions. That's the key policy result that comes out of that. Okay, so but that's if you can establish that uh, UI actually increasing increases tightness. So the last possible option is uh, just to wrap up what we said is that uh, is that in fact UI reduces tightness. Right. 
so this is just saying that theta tightness goes down when ui goes up yeah? and so this is possible you know this is what happens uh, in the standard matching model you know in a model with uh, a model with wedge bargaining plus a linear production function So that's exactly what, what you would get. And um, empirically, you know, you could look at how tightness responds to UI. Um, you would also, if you looked at elasticity, you would also be able to see that you're in this case, if your microelasticity is actually less than your microelasticity. You know, if at the micro effect, the effect of UI is worse than just at the micro effect. And in a case like this, um, everything that we've seen just above remains true, except you have to flip you have to flip all the signs. Um, so the, here it's true that the Bellicetti formula has to be corrected again, but the correction will be exactly upside down from, um, from the one we just seen. So now what will happen is just because the d theta d ui is the derivative of the opposite sign, all the correction of the opposite sign. So in fact, in good times, when your market is inefficiently tight, uh, what you want to do is actually give more ui than Bellicetti. In bad times, when your market is inefficiently slack, you want to give less ui than Bellicetti. And so what comes out of this is the opposite, is that optimal ui is actually pro-cyclical. Everything is upside down compared to the other. Um, so if you want, it means that optimal UI is uh, more generous in booms and in slums. And something I didn't note earlier, but I should have. So these results that we've got in the model, you know, with job rationing, where uh, the effect of UI on tightness is positive, that's exact. Actually, that's exactly as in the US. So the policy that we have in the US of extending the duration of UI in bad times is exactly consistent with that model. Uh, in the standard model, you get the opposite result that UI is more generous in booms and in slums, which you know maybe seems counterintuitive, um, but at least at the minimum, that's uh, opposite of the US policy. So if that was the case, if if that was actually the case, you need to flip around completely the way UI operates in the in the US. Um, okay, and the intuition you know is that. In this model, what happens is that in good times, so your, your tightness is too high. You want to lower your tightness. But UI does exactly that. UI is able to lower tightness, as we've seen. And so you give more UI in good times, that lowers your tightness and improves your welfare. In bad times, the opposite. Tightness is too low, your unemployment is too high. But by cutting UI, you're able to boost tightness and reduce unemployment. So you do exactly that. So you cut your UI, um, you cut your UI in, in bad times. Um, Okay, so what we see here is that we've seen how to design the dual policy. In different models, you have very different recommendations. So at the end, the good design of the policy becomes an empirical question. You've got to look at the empirical evidence to figure out the effect of policy and then using the formula design the appropriate uh, policy. So really, what this is saying you, telling you is that theory serves as a framework as a, that guides you, but then at the end, it's the empirical evidence that determines how policy should be uh, conducted.